Hello, thank you for joining us for another session of Crawl of the Oathbreaker. The Kell edition. It's not the Kell edition. But but it, but it basically is. I'm April. <laughs> I'm Joe. And we are Oh, twice, twice the, the dice. dice. Oh, 2D. No, 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 that's that's not a thing. That could be a thing though. That could be a shirt. That, that could any, be our t-shirt. Anything could be a thing. That's also true. Yeah. All right, offering up a brief recap of our last session. Kel, having arrived in Onedbeer with Arlen, uh, his trusty sidekick, former, buddy. <laughs> former far, farmhand. Trusty buddy. Um, some key events that happened during the last session. Uh, Kel met with Lord Sign Maunder, who is the Crown Warden, which is the leader of the uh, Knights of the Crown and Order of Paladins. Um, and Lord Sign Maunder is also apparently has a long history with Kel's parents. Um, so Kel met with him and they had some discussions both about his parents and Kel's own emerging abilities. Uh, Kel also had an opportunity to reconnect with some old friends from Willow Creek who have since relocated to Oned Beer. One of them, Carrie Tabor, um, uh, who finangled him into a date. Uh, she needed an escort for apparently a special event that is happening, what will now be when the session starts, tonight. It's not a date. Um, having a, <laughs> so she's going to meet him for lunch, take him shopping, and then they're going to, to head into their event. And, uh, Kel also had the opportunity to meet with an old friend, Beck Hendricks, who is now a, um, a member of the Royal Swords, which is the, um, the army. Uh, he's going, going career. Um, <laughs> and, uh, among some of the discussion that they had, was Beck offering that he take Kel on a walkabout with him, show him what the what the swords do, uh, take him on a walk along, and uh, Kel also talked to Beck about it's like a, it's like a ride along, yeah, like a ride along, yeah, yeah. that's why I said it like a walk along. <laughs> so good. Um, and Kel also mentioned that he had a strong interest in participating in the King's Games, yeah, which are happening. Yeah, very um, strong interest. And um in a couple of weeks time and uh, needs to get into a little bit of a <clears throat> fighting shape. That, that's what that looks like. <clears throat> that's how you get in shape too. You Come on, everybody. We're going to get into <clears throat> <clears throat> fighting shape. <laughs> and with that, it will be sometime the next morning with Kel waking up. What time does Kel wake up? He's going to try to get up early. He's going to try? Uh, yeah. I mean, he, mm. he wants to get an early start on the day. Uh, he wants to hit the ground running, you know, get a good workout in hmm. before we got to start okay. you know, trying okay. on clothes and all that nonsense. I would say Kel's pretty <coughs> used to getting up early. This is not a, a thing yeah. for him. He, he wakes up pretty but soon. But it, he's had... It probably used to be a lot easier for him than in the last couple of years. All right. Well, in that case, why don't you give me a constitution oh, check? He's had a busy couple of days. Maybe his schedule's getting a little disrupted. He's had some really crazy. So give me a con check. How'd that go? That's a six. <laughs> <laughs> you had planned on getting up pretty early, um, but by the by the time the um, sun is streaming through um that's actually what wakes you right as it as it falls across your face and you kind of bat at it thinking that's going to make it go away but um it's it uh. the beams do not disperse oh no 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 what time is it mm, it's probably about nine maybe ten oh, you gotta be kidding me go ahead and get up and uh hit the floor i think he's trying to get a Nice little morning workout together in his room. Uh, and, um, you know, whenever he's done with that, splash some water on his face and head downstairs. All right. 
Um, you do head downstairs. Easily done. I'm not going to make you roll for it. Um, we're going to keep this easy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like a roll for everything. Right. So oh, roll Turn the, the door. <laughs> you fall down the stairs. What would you like to do next? Try to get up? <laughs> oh, it's a two. <laughs> Unfortunately not. <laughs> I would love to I would love to play a game like that just for like a one shot where you've got to roll for every single thing. All right, anyway. Yeah. Um, and as you get to the bottom of the stairs, you do see Riccio. Um, sitting at the bar, he's kind of just leaning up against the side and he's chatting with someone. Um, very obvious, you can tell from it that this person is in um, the colors of the kingdom. So obviously a royal personage, okay. um, not of royalty, but serving in the, in the, you know what I mean? A royal servant. It's the complex words that I'm looking for. Um, and they're just ch chatting up at the counter and it looks like uh, the person who's in this livery um, has a glass next to him and is, is kind of sipping and just and laughing. Um, and Mauricio sees you and gives you a wave and, um, and then um, as, as it finishes, the servant finishes up their glass and smiles and waves and ratio smiles and waves and you see him head out the door just finding a seat really ignoring all of that because he's like that's not my business okay just uh go find a find a spot we're gonna eat a nice hearty breakfast okay before we get on the road today all righty um oh. you see uh this is your first or second night staying in the room this is the first this is the first night this is the no. No, it's second the second night. night. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been here? Two nights. <laughs> right. <clears throat> you see, I apologize for my cough, y'all. I'm going to try to cough away from everything. It's okay. All right. All right. Um, Riccio walks over to you um, as you're sitting at one of the tables and uh, we'll go morning yeah good still yeah good morning um, all right all right did you sleep well uh, yeah so i slept all right all right well um, good to know good to know um we're not actually serving breakfast this morning um but uh if you where, where can i get food in the morning there's a there's an entire city out there. There's some great little, my favorite spot to grab something when I'm out running and about errands. So there's actually a little vendor cart right down the road. You can get some little hand, hand sandwiches or right. hand, uh, hand pockets. Hand pockets. Yeah. They're, they're little pieces of bread and they got meat stuffed in them. Look, That's they're fine. great. They're fantastic. Right. You'll like them. Thanks. Um, Stand your, up. <sighs> your friend, um, Arlen. He already left out this morning, so oh. he said he would probably be back um, later this later this afternoon. He was continuing to explore the city, I think, and uh, right. he found a, wandered into a couple of shops yesterday, and so he wanted to go back and take another look at him. But he did tell you he'd be back later this evening, so or later you, this afternoon. You um, you have any information on on where people sign up for the games? The Kings games. Yeah. Oh, it's. Very fortuitous that you have asked this question. Um, that's actually was one of the royal uh, messengers. They're distributing flyers, and he points over to um, part of the the tavern where there's actually like a message board, and you can see large and color t colorful this huge parchment um, that is on very uh, very expensive. Um, like vellum, uh, that's the big expensive stuff. Sure. Um, but it, it's these intricate carvings that just of, and I will show you this. I will Very hand nice. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, and you see what is obviously a flyer. Um, all of the intricate drawings around it are bursting in color. And as you're watching, you can see that they're actually, the, the dragon is kind of moving and sliding. Um, there's this slight movement to the, uh, to the images on the print. And you can see the list of the King's Games there. And as you are 
standing in front, I'm assuming you walk over to take a closer oh, yeah, look because yeah. the flyer does not actually fall down off the, yeah, fly when, off when the he, board. When he indicates where it is, go ahead and head yeah. over there. And, and then you see that listing uh, listing this uh, this uh, complete list of games, which you actually have in front of you, and I do not because I gave you my only copy of the flyer. Oh. Um, <laughs> But there are several games, um, as you can see, ranging from uh, musical talent contest, performance contest. There are games of uh, athletic skill. There are games of uh, intelligence and wit. Um, so all sorts of games that are taking place. And obviously you remember from the Minaret um, broadcast, um, the culmination is the Battle of Champions at the end of the day. And as you're looking and perusing, um, you do know that uh, Carrie said she would meet you for lunch. Um, you assume that'll probably be around midday um, and you'd have a, a little quick meal and then um, head out. Um, and as you're perusing this, you hear the door of the tavern open behind you. You look over your shoulder <clears throat> and you see um, Beck walking in. Hey, hey, just the guy I was looking for. Oh, yeah. I was uh, thinking I could pop in and maybe if you were around. Um, so listen, oh, hey, yeah. And he kind of looks over your shoulder and sees that you're looking at the flyer for the Kings games. So you had said that, um, you know, maybe you were going to give it the old one, two, go uh, chance and uh, at some of the Kings games, maybe even enter the Battle of Champions. Um, but uh, he kind of looks you up and down. So maybe you're not quite in the fighting shape that would be there. And maybe I could help out. So like we were talking about, you yeah. could um, come to the, uh, to the guard's place. Um, the sword's place, and you know we've got some equipment and whatnot. But I can do you one better, one better, my bro. Um, there is a uh, a guy and gal I know. Um, they help out the swords um, with some of kind of our training regimen. Okay. Um, they have some uh, various uh, concoctions um, and things that help us. Um, improve our abilities um, and on top of that you know sometimes training gets a little bit rough people get uh, the banged up the, you get the tight muscles they got things for that too so anyway I was thinking if you've got a little bit of time we could hop on over there and I'll introduce you if you're interested um, and you can talk about what they got yeah I, I don't Beck, I don't really want to I don't need to take any kind of potions or Anything. Oh no, man! I, I just need I just need to eat better and pick up heavy things and put them down. Yeah, no. I, I don't I don't need to spend what little gold I have on on fancy stuff. Oh no 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 no! Uh, so understand, this is no magic enhancing. It's all natural ingredients meant to work with your own body and the own efforts you put into it. It's just to help kind of give you a little bit of boost. You know what I'm saying? It's like the Onan Beer GNC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Fine. What's, wait, it's about, you said it was getting close to midday and I'm supposed to meet Carrie. Did Carrie say where I'm supposed to meet her at? She's going to meet you here She's at the Lucky Leap. Yeah. All right. Um, so you still have probably an couple hours before she's that you assume she's going to be there all right i i yeah we can go check it out i gotta make it ha, I got, gotcha my bro got come on okay he, he gives you a big pat on the back and starts leading you out the front door sure so any uh did you work last night did you, did you go out and uh, stop crime or anything no man i went back and caught some sleep because it was pretty late after i was oh, done with you here right. yeah yeah but Next on my things to do is to get out there and protect the good citizens of Onad Beer. Yeah. Yeah. How's, walk, that, walk how's, that, been, how's that been going for you? Oh, 
pretty, pretty good. I mean, I I love it here. This is a great, great yeah. town. Yeah. Um, I really like it. I mean, I loved Willow Creek, right? I mean, that was an amazing place to grow up in <laughs> and, you know, not to, build, you know, uh, play down the fact of all that I was pretty much, well, you know, like the big man around town. But, you know, I really needed to get out there. I wanted to test um, myself. Oh. And, you know, okay, Balder. Balder, you got to stop, buddy. This is not happening. We do. You hear the sounds of the crowd <laughs> over in the corner. Some grunts as two right. people look like they're getting into a wrestling right. match. That sounds like a <laughs> how, how is that? I'm incorporating Balder. it. Our dog is under the table. And whenever we do this, he, he wants to participate. He throws up such a ruckus. Stop, buddy. He wants attention. He does. All right. You sure. guys head out. Um, Beck it kind of keeps saying, you know, continues to tell you the story about, yeah, and I really love it. And this is great, you know, and, and I've really just kind of worked my way up through over the last several years, yeah. you know, become a very uh, integral uh, part of the a part of the sorts. I mean, they really just wouldn't be the organization, you know, taking some of the younger people underneath my wings, whatnot, really providing. I never knew I had such a uh, affinity for uh, mentoring uh younger people and helping to bring out the best in them. But, you know, I do, I do. Yeah. And I really, I really do quite, quite enjoy it. Um, I'm so- glad you're doing that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, here we are. All right. And you find yourself in front of um, what is a, it's obviously it's been there for a while. Um, there is a sign in front, it says Griselda's Apothecary. Oh. Um, and it is kind of that, um, itali like almost like an italicized script, so it's not too fancy. Um, it just kind of provides this little cozy cottage look to it. Um, and it's a wooden sign with um, this green trim and then just a gold filigree lettering kind of filling it in. Um, and the um, shop itself, um, there are these wide windows in front, but you notice that there's kind of like this film over the windows and you're not sure if that's on purpose or right. if it's just some accumulated dust and debris from being in a potion shop. Um, here we are. Great. Um, yeah. yeah. Hit, right. Grab the handle and head on inside. F tink, tink, tink. <laughs> and you uh, head inside the shop. Um, it looks more like a, um, like an herbalist than what you would kind of expect from an apothecary. Um, there are dried herbs hanging down everywhere. Um, there are, uh, you, you don't see um, what you've what you've kind of experienced. You don't see a lot of like crazy ingredients, you know, like you may have expected. Or like, like eyeballs floating. In right. Jars there's no like, like dragon, you know, teeth or yeah, floating eyeballs or anything like, a butterfly like that. That's all segmented, but its wings still work. Right. It all. It really looks more like an herbalist shop, but you do see, and everything is is actually very clean. Um, it kind of almost has like what you would expect in a village herbalist or a, a simple uh, uh, kind of woodsy, you know, very natural feel to it. Um, and you wow. see that there are various shelves um, and some of the shelves do have bottles on them. Some of the shelves have like look what little like little sachets. Um, some of them you do see what look like to be soaps. Um, so just all kinds. And as you walk in, and the the bell comes out, you see a young woman. She's got um, long kind of blondish, blondish brown hair, and she has a garland of flowers. Um, and she is wearing um, like a loose flowing um, uh, white kind of simple peasant, uh, like a peasant style bl blouse top and, and skirt. She looks like a hippie flower, you know, like a hippie flower child with right. loose flowing and, well, hello. Hi, Beck. And she runs over and Beck gives her a big grin. Hey, Marquia. Um, 
How's it going? It's going really well. It's so nice to see y'all. Come in. Who is this? Hi, who are you? Hi, uh, my name is Kel. I'm, I'm Beck's friend. Well, it is very nice to meet you, Kel, Beck's yeah, friend. Good, good to meet you, too. Um, what brings you to our little... Sh oh. Two guesses and I only need one. I know what you're here for. Um, let me go grab Buelto. I'll be right back with him and you boys can talk. And she heads off. She's kind of like practically skipping as she heads back look, into look the back. Look over at Beck. What, what does she think we're here for? Oh, no, she's pretty much well right. Buelto is the one who really handles kind of the performance um, side of their business. Uh, so um, Marquia, well, I mean, you can kind of tell. She's more into all of the... Um, unjuints and whatnot to help with minor healings, um, things that make you sleep better. Um, she really has this great line of like um, skincare products that really kind of help with, uh, you know, smoothing out the lines and, and helping to keep your, your skin nice. hydrated. Yeah, yeah, she's really great. But Welto, yeah, he does the stuff that's like really kind of focused on um, like I said, what me and my boys need. And while she does a lot of the stuff um, that helps us keep our muscles loose and maybe kind of helps with the minor repairs, he's the one who's like, you know, hey, you need this and it'll help you, you know. With this. With this, yeah. <laughs> well, dude, he's from Fordun, um, but apparently um, Marquia like traveled there at some point. I guess she was like looking for um, some uh, special, um, uh, I don't know, herbs or something that only grows in that part. And she traveled over there, they met, he abandoned everything for true love and came back over here to own that beer. And now they run this little place and he brings his own special, like he was in the gladiator pits there, man. You know what I'm talking about? Those four Darren barbarians. They know about this. So, anywho, long story. And as he's finishing up there, you do Jeez. see this large. So, you know <coughs> that Beck has something in his ancestry. Yeah. He is a very large man. There is something in his ancestry that is not human. Not human yeah. It's like a giant or, or something. Right. This individual... That ancestry is a lot more closer lot, in, his, right. in his family line. Right. I mean, he ducks as he actually walks in. Um, he's probably mm -hmm. a good seven and a half. We're, we're, this is the Andre, the, you know, giant, right. you know, looking individual as he, as he comes walking in. Mm. Beck, good to see you. Who are you? Oh, my name is Kel. Kel, good to see you. Yeah. Hey, Buelto. Um, so this is my man, Kel, as you already, you know, introduced each other. And Kel's trying to get into some good t -t -t shape for uh, the Kings games. The games are not far. Yeah, you need listen, help. I, 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 don't, I don't need potions or ointments or anything weird. All right. I just need to, I just need to eat better, and I need to work out more, and I need to get a little faster. I'm plenty strong. Maybe just, maybe just fit in my armor a little bit more. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? You need something that will support. <sighs> you are committed to eating right and daily workout. Yeah. Mm. Yes. There is. This is why Beck. Brought you here. Right. I provide to the royal swords. That's what I heard. Yes. So, um, what, are, so what are we talking about? What, what is this? Something I... Uh, well... Like I said, I, I'm not really... I'm not interested in, in potions or anything odd. Hmm. Well... And I don't have a lot of gold... It is a mixture. ...to spend. It is a mixture of my own devising. Uh, you... That I use myself. It is all made from what the earth provides us. Okay. So it is just our bodies 
in harmony with the world and nature. And it is sure to guarantee quickest results in improving your performance. Great. He walks over and you see he pulls um, along the, uh, actually goes back behind and pulls out a little, a little bottle, <clears throat> sets it on the table, use for 10 days. Yeah, what is it? I told you, it is a mixture of my own. And just use it for 10 days? Yes. Look over it. at Beck, like, are, are you kidding me? Hey, look He's at not this. saying that, that's just the look he's getting. He holds it. Does this lie? Use for 10 days. As long as you eat right, exercise, that will help you put you in the best peak performance. It is what I do when I am preparing for big event. In past, big fight in the pits that I needed to be at my top. Oh. Now, I use it before marathon. Okay, all right, how much? Being as you are a friend of the king's own, I give you service friends discount. 150 gold. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. It is worth it. All right. Look over at Beck. Oh. All right. 150. 150? 150. God, come on. All right, here you go. I can't believe this guy 150 gold. Here you go. And he takes the gold and hands it over. You will not regret this. Take the take the bottle and uncork it. Mm -hmm. Smell it. Mm -hmm. What's it smell like? Um, it smells very earthy. I mean, it smells like. Oh. This is. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> oh. This is dog. It smells like grass and herbs oh. and like maybe we need to take a break so that we can figure out what's up with him. I know exactly what's up with him. Because it's going to get very distracting. Because it's their time. It's their, their supper time. <gasps> oh, okay, let's feed them. That's exactly what's up. Okay. All right. So, um, and I will go ahead and tell you now. So you'll use it for 10 days. Okay. And at the end of that time, you will effectively be under the effects of a potion of heroism for one week. <clears throat> All right. Well, thanks, thanks a bunch for this. Appreciate of course. It. it was a pleasure. Yeah. Same. And you see um, Mark, uh, Markia comes back out. Oh, so you've got what you needed, huh? We got it. Thanks um, a bunch. So glad. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Kel. Yeah. See, she goes over to, she barely comes up to like, it is a very. <laughs> it's a stark difference between the <laughs> And two. she kind of wraps her arms that go about this far and <laughs> leans her head up against. And you see that he actually, his, his face kind of turns up in a barely perceptible smile and he puts his arm around Very her. cute. All right. You well, Beck, thanks a bunch. This was good. This yeah, was good. for sure, for sure. Well, um, now that my uh, deed for the day is done, I do need to get back to work, but I'm really glad that I could hook you up with this. Yeah. I wish you all the best and luck with it. And um, I'll tell you what, do you want to pick a day that you want to get together? Yeah, or? Let, let, me, uh, let me get through today. And then All right. After I get through today, I'll get back with you and, and we'll, we'll pick a day. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know where to find me. You can send a message. You can swing on mm -hmm. by if I'm there. Um, or just leave a message there. By coming by. Hey, yeah. man. We'll meet up with each other we'll again. Meet up. And he holds we'll out touch. his hand and gives you a big 
It's good seeing you. Oh, and pulls you in. Oh, God. Okay. Hugs you around. All right, all right. Oh, man, Kel, it's really nice to have you around. Um, I'm really looking forward to all this. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. All righty. <sighs> goes sauntering off. <clears throat> Like walk outside and try to get my bearings okay. on where we are. I think he was so focused on listening to Beck's stories that he's not entirely sure. Okay. Where we are. Uh, All right. Why don't you give me a perception check? <laughs> Kel doesn't like to ask for directions. <laughs> I got it. I got it. That's a fort. No, I'm kidding. That's a. <laughs> 20 dirty 20 all right yeah no it's easily done you kind of step outside going what the and then you immediately look over and you go oh yeah that's right we came around the corner there that building right there okay and you start walking your way and with a with a dirty 20 you do find you weren't actually that far from the from the tavern you're a couple of streets over but it's no big deal past um, the watershed the guy with the dog it's, yeah um and as you are walking back you do hear um the what you know to be that um minaret of the speaker um which is that uh huge tower that uses to broadcast announcements throughout right. oned beer um and this rich lovely voice you know that the speaker for the minaret is um, like the head of the um, the uh, I people didn't remember the the name of it, but it's the minstrel school. Oh, okay. Um, and hear ye, hear ye, people of Onadbir, and guests from afar. The minaret of the speaker announces with great excitement that the king's games will commence at the break of dawn, thirteen days hence, at the esteemed Dragon Plaza. Located at the heart of our vibrant city. Let it be known that in the spirit of unity, celebration, King Waldron encourages all to partake in the festivities, regardless of station or origin. Flyers are now going up around the city with details on the contest available this year for those who wish to test their athleticism, wit, and valor. Artisans, vendors, and entertainers will also grace the plaza, ensuring a feast not only for the spirit of competition, but for the senses as well. Long live King Waldron, and long may the light of camaraderie shine upon the kingdom of Aglarion. <clears throat> right. Mm, that, was a, that was a lot. <laughs> out there don't they good let's take a look at these games uh, let's see we got the, uh are, are there is, is there a hanging sign somewhere nearby look for a list of the games he he gave him a, a once over but he's like i really need to yeah make i some mean decisions the flyers all look the same they're the same this yeah. beautiful um you know vellum expensive um expensive vellum with the very very colorful and obviously magical on it um and it's very easy to find good go, go head over to one and start just kind of scrolling through it taking a look at everything what's that there's the merful lumberjacks what is truth or bean what what happened to wrestling huh or arm wrestling or like rock throwing or fighting and he's fighting. It's got to be the leap of death. What? What is this? As you're kind of randomly sh <laughs> shouting out, <laughs> you see people kind of walking by and looking at you, and some people smile a little confused. It's stay. Let's just skirt around the the large. <laughs> <laughs> individual confused it's individual <laughs> um some people give you a little bit of you know looking down their nose and kind of step to the other side of the street oh don't don't do that <sighs> okay great how many how many of these do we do you do know how the the games are structured i mean the games oh, good. go on every year i mean this is a massive a right. massive uh 
event. Um, <clears throat> and uh, each one of the contests that are listed, they don't happen simultaneously. It's a single event. They happen in order. And usually what happens is people move from place to place around the city kind of following the games oh, as they occur. Nice. Okay. And then the culmination cool. is the king you know, cool. is the battle of the champions. Um, and throughout all of it, there's, like I said, there's, um, there's vendors that have, um, you know, uh, artisan goods. So it, this is really a chance for all the, you know, the foods and, and drink and all that good kind of stuff. But then also people are um, showing their wear. And this does bring people from neighboring kingdoms. So there, it's really an opportunity for a lot of those um you know, demonstrations, but you also get people from the smaller settlements just around Oned Beer who come in. So a lot of Willow Creek, um, you know, merchants and stuff bring, come and set up little booths and tables. So more than enough to accommodate the fact that the city's about to be <laughs> just absolutely overwhelmed with a crush of people. So, right. Oh, that's a great name for a lot of people. A crush? A crush of people. Oh, thanks. I, that, that's just really cool. I I want to use that now. Wow, this is a crush of people. Yeah, like I read a lot of Renaissance romance. Oh. So anytime you have a crowded they, ball, yeah, it's a crush. Really? That's in there? I assume that's where I picked it up. See, I don't know. Read your Regency romance. <laughs> yeah, actually, Regency romance. What I, see, you understand romance genres better than I, I do. Uh, only, because awesome. of, only because of you. That's the only reason I have this familiarity with it. By All the right. way, Bridgerton's a great show. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Right. What is Kel doing? What are you doing? Uh, well, I think after Kel examines the board for mm -hmm. a little bit, he is he wants to make sure that he gets back, um, excuse me, to the Lucky Leap. Okay, to right. To get ready to meet with Carrie. Okay. And um, and he's gonna he's gonna jog back. Oh. He's gonna jog back. Keeping up with that. Uh, yeah. Finding every opportunity to get yeah. your steps Boom. in. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Just get a couple um, of steps in. It tastes like, like a wheat germ shot. Oh. So. Like wheatgrass? Wheatgrass, thank you. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I do know. I know. I That's a it. really good thing we've been gaming yeah. as long as we Jake. have. So when I said, you know how to interpret what I'm saying? Jake, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. It tastes like lawn. Um, did you, uh... <laughs> You're going to give him a roll. No, because as much I as you talk it. about, like Kel is maybe Kel, not in the I best mean, shape, but he still has been working. He's yeah. he's a Kel works on a, a farm. He's yeah. been he's a daily. strong, hardy individual. Yep. He has just sort of let himself go recently, but he still does the work that's necessary and can still do a lot. Of course, that's not running, is it? No, it's we'll, not. But we'll just kind he's of. He's not running either. Let me just say, <laughs> Kel is. Kel is <laughs> Taking a light jaw. Three yeah. hours later, we're still discussing whether or not. Oh. <laughs> okay, you make it back to the lucky Thank lake with you. your amazing. Let me scratch. Let me scratch a couple rage here. <laughs> right. I'm just gonna see how winded you are. You yeah. show up, Carrie's there, and she's like, yeah. "Oh." Do you want me to give you a con check just to see no. how he's feeling? All right. <laughs> if you would like to roll a con check, I, I will. I will let you, check. but but no, it no. is not necessary it could, to could get back bad. to the lucky leap without it having really all, without like yeah passing out on the side of the street. Mm -hmm. I tried to run. <laughs> no good. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> you're fine. You get back. All right. You're back at the lucky leap. Um, and you head inside. There are, um, the Lucky Leap does serve lunch. Um, and so there is a, there is a quite a, quite a crowd here. This is a very popular place. So there, there has been quite a crowd. Um, and you see up at the bar, um, leaning over it, looking pretty as a pitcher, um, your friend Carrie. Oh. Um, and, uh, you see, uh, uh, Riccio. Is is there too, um, leaning over and just it is obvious he is putting on the show. There are broad gestures and leaning back with a <laughs> and uh, and she's just leaning forward and and nodding and smiling. Uh, is there a table open? Um, 
Actually, there is not. Hey, move. No, okay, no, he's not doing that. Um, However, great. you do have, um, you do know you can either go somewhere else for lunch. Uh, maybe no, she has plans fine. for that. He doesn't mind eating or at the bar. I just want to, he was trying to see if there was Riccio has said you can use his private oh, apartments, oh, and there is a setting up area up no, there. We don't, need, we don't need that. Okay. Head over to the bar. Okay. Is there a room next to Carrie? Mm-hmm. Sure, okay. you can squeeze in next to her. Yeah, go ahead and squeeze in. Well, hello hey. there. <laughs> Kel, hey. welcome back, my friend. Well, I was just taking sorry. a moment to have a lovely conversation with you. I had no idea that you were acquainted with Miss Carrie Table. Oh, yeah. Carrie and I go way back. We uh, grew up in Willow Creek together. Yeah, so she was telling me. So yeah. she was telling me. Well... My two young people, I will let you, uh, I understand that you are having lunch and perhaps you would like to eat at my happy and fine establishment? Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, oh. We can eat right here as long as Carrie's all right with that. Oh, that suits me just fine. Great. She kind of, you look like, it looks like Riccio is going to kind of, like maybe he doesn't think this is the best place, but seeing that she just hops up and kind of makes herself comfortable, he's like, oh, oh, all right, all right. Um, well, I will bring you the lunch special and uh, leave you to your delightful conversation. And how Thanks. about a couple of uh, glasses of wine? Uh, just, just some water for me. I would love wine. Thank you so much. All right, glass of wine, cup of water couple of lunch specials and you two just uh settle in and enjoy yourself and he gives you a big he's shooting one of those what? No, <laughs> and he just shakes his head in uh obvious just oh that poor boy <laughs> <clears throat> and you see him start moving around um he passes one of the um the serve the serving girls and s- says something and indicates over to you and then he starts making his rounds back around the around the tavern and shaking hands and saying hello and having boisterous conversation. Hey, Carrie. Well, hello. So, um, we have a thing. <laughs> we sure do. Yeah, tell me about that. Well, um... If, if you don't mind. No, absolutely. So I, I should prepare you a little bit for, uh, the evening. And yeah. thank you again, Kel. I know that this is... Probably not your idea of, uh, well, <laughs> it's not your idea. Yeah. <laughs> so the first part of it is, um, I'll tell you about, uh, there's a, I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, it's the Golden Nectar Inn. Um, it's a, well, the most elegant uh, in and the place where anybody who's anybody uh, goes. Um, in addition to being a fine establishment of an inn, it's also a uh, known for its uh, fine cuisine and, of course, uh, the amazing performances of uh, Dorian. She, uh, you've heard of Dorian, haven't you? Have I heard of Dorian? No. Yeah, no, I, I don't know who that is. Oh. Well, then you are in for a real treat, my friend. Anyway, the Golden nec- uh, Nectar, um, the proprietor is hosting a uh, competition of sorts, um, a clash of chefs, if you will. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a cooking contest, so he's bringing together two of the most exquisite and famous chefs, and they are going to provide the evening's meal. I'm here for it. Yeah, and um, well, this is the part of it that Princess Athena will be there. So um, the winner of the competition, uh, she will be the ultimate judge, and the winner of the competition will get to serve at the royal court um, and prepares the prince, the princess's uh, personal meals. I don't... You don't look happy about that. I 
And she kind of looks around. The, the princess is a unique individual. And as can be the case with those in uh, positions of power, she can be challenging. Challenging how? She just hard on people? Yes. Great. But it should be an opportunity, as I said, for some exquisite dining. And afterward, now you'll particularly love this part, a uh, masquerade ball. Okay. Oh. Um, so you may not be aware, because I don't know how much you pay attention to the calendar, but tonight is actually the evening of the annual ball hosted by Lord and Lady Wiltimer. You do know the Wiltimers. Um, they have an annual ball to commemorate the handing back of power. Um, the Wiltimers are an old house, a noble house. Um, and at one point during the kingdom's history, um, they actually were the ruling, ruling house. They were the monarchy because the, um, if you remember the history of Elgarion, um, Rasmurel Melkar the True, who was the one who defeated the uh, Order of Eternal Light mm -hmm. and brought about the Age of Kings and the Melkar dynasty was the first of that. But eventually that dynasty ended without an heir. So the Wiltemars stepped in. Right. They led for a while. And then another heir was found and the Wiltemars stepped handed down. back power to them, which of course was this amazing thing. People see this fa the, the Wiltimer house as being uh, very loyal and noble and right. obviously doing what is the best for the kingdom. How was their, <clears throat> how was their rule perceived? Um, by all accounts, it was... Held the line. And held the line, yeah. It was very stable. Right. Um, and then of course, um, you know, the Melkar dynasty was recognized for being, um, you know, because that's what saved the kingdom from the uh, Order of the Eternal Light. So they hold this annual ball um, every year to commemorate um, that event. And it's open to um, <clears throat> all uh, stations. Right. And um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge thing. C Carrie. <clears throat> Carrie, are, are we going to the golden nectar or are we going to the ball? Yes. Wait. How many things are we going to? Well, th that's it. We'll go to the golden nectar for dinner. Okay. And then after dinner. This is all the same night? Yes. Okay, sorry. Okay. I, I thought, like, I just, great. Well, Kel, you're breaking my heart a little bit that you apparently think that spending two evenings with me yeah, would be that, that much of a burden. I don't, I don't mind spending any evenings with you. It's just, you know, I want to make sure that when I go that I'm doing what I need to do for you and not, you know, um, being me. Does that make sense? Kill. Okay. She puts her hand on yours. All you need to do is just stay in there and be you. That's, that's, all right. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Okay. Once we get you into some uh, fine vestments, yeah. you will be the uh, dashing escort that I require. Right. And seriously, you are doing a favor for me. This, um, these are significant events. Right. And so the uh, party that I represent of making sure that uh, just because he is not able to attend, I should still make an appearance and represent for him. Right. So having an escort at my side is much appreciated, and I'd rather have it be a friend. Sure. So. Good. Great. Great. Oh.
All right. Yeah, I haven't eaten anything today. <laughs> and <coughs> lunch is put in front of you. <laughs> big hearty portions, lots of big uh, fluffy, crusty loaves of bread dripping with butter and some honey off to the side for uh, drizzling on top or dipping in um, and large tankards of water. Perfect. Clear, refreshing, this beautiful is water. Yes. This is per- Look at it. This is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect. This is, what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. And... You eat? Yeah. And you pass a pleasant lunch. Eat that lunch. Eat that lunch. Um, Carrie eats very delicately, but she also eats very efficiently and quickly. Um, so not to rush us along. Yeah, no. But I know, we got, we got places to be. Yes, we do have an appointment for you to uh, be fitted. Cool. And myself as well, my gown should be, should be ready. So. All right. well, let's do that. All right. Um, if there are any discussion topics or questions that you want with her before you guys head out, otherwise, y'all engage in yeah I, as I much think... chit chat as Kel. She keeps up with either a running conversation or you know. I think as they walk, he's just asking questions about, you know, um, is there a dance I need to learn? Are we, you know, like the kind of things that he knows happen at events. He, Kel doesn't hasn't been to. Probably has never been to a high end anything, but he's been to festivals and balls, just they would have been more like harvest festivals. Right. Where it was a particular dance mm-hmm. that everybody did at the end, you know. So he's asking the things he want, you know, that he feels like he has some level of understanding about. You know, is right. there a dance I need to be aware of? Is there any particular key etiquette things that we have to be careful of? You know, don't look the princess in the eye. Don't, you know what I mean? Like the kind of things like never do this, never do this. What's taboo and what's not. Yeah. That kind of thing. All righty. So she tells you specifically against those three points as regards the ball, um, because of the fact that this is the big open to everybody of station, right. um, most, most of what happens there is an opportunity for people to see the estate, the, the estate, the villa um, of the Wiltemers, which has beautiful gardens and um, this lovely greenhouse. And of course, there's all this food that's provided. Um, so it actually, for a noble ball and as fancy as it is, it will be more casual. Right. Um, because of the fact that they know that there will be people of all sorts, not just nobility and right. royalty coming through. Right. Um, as far as dancing, it's the same. The dancing is available, um, but it runs through the gambit again to please all people. Right. So she's like, you know, she's like, don't worry, you won't have to do the waltz if you don't want to. <laughs> um, they'll play the spring jig, you know, or right. what. So you know, she said, if you want to dance, you certainly can. It wouldn't be bad. For to be seen taking a turn about the, the sure. floor mainly for her. Yeah. Um, and then the one thing that she does talk about with the princess, the one thing I will say about the princess, as would be expected, mm. courtesy and deference to royalty, and be careful. Be careful. very, very, very careful. She will say things that are petty and cruel, especially as um, I'm with you. You two have a, some kind of history? Not really more so than she does with any woman. I think you'll understand when you meet her. Um, As I said, she's a unique individual. We will be required to present ourselves to her during the meal. At some point, they will tell us when we need to go to to say hello. All right. And uh, what's her preferred way of being addressed? I'm sure her preferred way of being addressed is your royal eminence of 
unsurpassed regard that oh. you can refer to as your your highness. Right. Yeah, that works for me. So, courtesy and deference and caution. And we'll get through it together. All right. Oh, and here we are. Hey. <laughs> and you arrive at a, um, this is, um, you are in the high district. Um, and this particular shop, unlike the um, apothecary you visited this morning, which was much homier and obviously much uh, uh, simpler, um, this place oozes, right? Even as you're looking outside, um, refinement. It, it is the kind of structure that says, step inside these gloried halls and you too shall be That's made, right. you know. Right. Um, and you see... There's nothing on the racks. We make it all. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, you do see in uh, the windows, which are there these um, arched windows, absolutely clear panes of glass, um, and these elegant figures um, of, of uh, what look to be, um, uh, which are like basically mannequins um, with these clear lines um, and these gorgeous, each one's wearing a gorgeous outfit um, and very, you know, obviously custom in the design. Um, nice. And there is um, no signage outside. Okay. But you do see, um, as you're walking through the door inside, you can see that there's like this scroll work all along the door frame. And as you're looking at it closer, you remember seeing um, some book of animals that maybe like your mother read you, you know, like A is for and B is, you know, and it was all animals. Um, there was an elephant and it looks like the scroll work is this interlocking and you almost, without really looking at it closely, it's just beautifully done it's elephant it's interlocking elephant trunks in this scroll work that runs all around the frame of the door oh that's great look at that look, look at that and you do see on the only um there's no there's no sign that says that there is etched into um there's a glass in the center of the door and etched in it are these stylized e's and it says e e Mm. Look at the elephants. Oh, yes. Nice. Welcome to the elegant elephant. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, and it, I wonder it why they call it that. It'd be an interesting story, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, after you. I like it. Head inside. All righty. And you head inside. Um, and it is very elegant. Um, it's very quiet. You hear some light music playing. It's just a, and it's not intrusive at all. It just provides this nice ambience. Um, <clears throat> and as you uh, walk through the doors, um, and you and, and Carrie step inside, you see a trio, um, two women and, um, and a man, um, who are in various places and they all come uh, walking, walking towards you. Um, and the two, they all look, there is a similarity to them. Um, it's obvious that they are brothers and sisters. The oh, two okay. girls look like twins. And the only reason the male doesn't look like a twin is because he's got like a very sweeping, elegant mustache. Wow. Um, I like it. And, but even looking at the three of them, it's hard to decide which one's like prettier than the others. I think Kel would like straighten his beard out. <laughs> right, just brush out some of the <clears throat> breadcrumbs. Um, and you see um, the, uh, the, um, <laughs> that dog. Anyway, you see the man um, as 
as you walk in, he's kind of stepped back from them and he's got a, uh, what looks like a tablet in his arm and a quill. And he immediately starts looking between you and Carrie and he's writing notes and the two sisters come, uh, come forward. Welcome, welcome indeed, our dear guests, Miss Tebor. It's always so lovely to see you again. Your dress will only take a moment, and I suppose this is the uh, the individual that you told us that we would also be outfitting. I'm glad you told them about me already. We don't have to give them that whole story. <laughs> so to um, expedite things here, um, Mr. My name's Kel. Mr. Kel. Yeah. Very well. My name is Hakrila. I'll be assisting you. Acrila? Hack. Oh, Hakrila. Hakrila. Oof. It's a rad name. So if you wouldn't mind coming with me, we'll get you settled in the back. We have an outfit selected for you, so I think we'll just do some some measurements and um and make us finalize our selection from there and just finalize to see how things work, if that's, sure. if that's all right with you. That's, oh. I'm here to do this. Fantastic. You're in very good hands. And she oh, takes you great. and she takes and links her arm through you and says, that's and nice. leans over, we will take very good care of them. I know you will. And she starts leading you back into a back room and you see the, uh, the other sister um, takes the same thing, kind of links arms with Terry. Carrie, and it's obvious that she's been here before. They right. immediately start kind of chatting back and forth, and they're laughing, and they head back off into another room. Hackerla, I don't know um, what's been picked out for me. Well, we have a couple um, selections. I'm okay. going to uh, take your measurements and uh, get a little bit of look for you now that I've seen you in a sense of style. And, uh, oh, Lysander is going to help us as well. My brother has um, a real eye and impeccable in it just through this process. We'll guide you through, don't worry, it'll be completely painless. Um, and we'll Ooh. help you guide towards the right selection based, on, based on everything. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And they take you into the back room and the brother falls behind and he's still kind of, you see that he's, Ooh. and you realize now he's, it looks like he's probably sketching. Ooh more than actually taking notes. Okay. And she motions to the dais and if you'll step right yeah, if you'll of step course. up please sorry, she keeps slipping into Carrie's accent. No, she, I, she, she, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a common accent. Uh, stand up on the dais. All like right. this. Try to stand straight. All right. And she takes out um, a uh, a little roll of something and you see as she kind of flicks her hand and it whew. all right here we and she starts taking your measurements there we go so how'd you get the name the elegant elephant so it's <laughs> just as she's taking measurements all right sorry I put my arms up. no no worries whatsoever <clears throat> it's a little bit of a of an inside family joke in terms of the fact that elephants um, are not what one would normally think in clothing. However, if you can make an elephant elegant, just think what we can do for you. Yeah. Is, that, is that what's happening here right now? Well, you're certainly no elephant, Mr. Kell. Thanks. And much better bones and structure to work with, I quite assure you. You are going to look magnificent. I think you'll be quite happy. Um, I'm going to uh, hazard a guess um, in just our brief moment of conversation here. You're not a, how shall I say, fussy individual. So we will make sure that what we put together for you honors that uh, aesthetic choice. We I want you mind. to be. I don't mind wearing something nice. I just, you know, I, I just no, I don't feel that. Look, I, I just want to. I'm going to be walking with her all night, so I want to make sure that whatever I'm wearing, you know, just honors her. Is my goal. That is an incredibly 
thoughtful. And we will make sure that you do justice to the incomparable Miss Tabor. Great. With that, Lysander, do you have your suggestion for what you think will garb uh, Mr. Kell and help him do justice both to Miss Tabor and himself? And he holds up this uh, picture and you see that it's a very rough sketch of you. Again, it's just this kind of the simple lines. Yeah. Um, nice. And, um, but he has captured, um, he's an, obviously an amazing little sketch artist. There is both a, a uh, sense of power and elegance in the lines that he's drawn, even though he hasn't like fleshed out your features or anything. And you see um, that what he has is, because it is a masquerade ball, there is a um, mask drawing to the side and then the clothing costume as well. And the mask is a lion um, with these snarling jaws. Um, the most dramatic part of the piece is the mask itself. Um, it looks like he has captured it with um, uh, a, like a goal. It's very intricate kind of designs that he's sketched through and, and painted in gold. Um, and then the uh, outfit is more of a loose kind of flowing white silk, but um, but um, but still, even though it, the material itself is this flowing white silk, it's kind of belted and, and fitted through. Um, and then you see to the side that there is a sword um, or a cane, sorry. It's a, it's a cane, but you can see that next to that is a sword. So it's, it's a sword cane oh. that kind of completes the entire outfit. Does this meet with your approval, Mr. Kell? So funny, because <laughs> Joe's sitting there going, "Can we put a jacket on top of that? <laughs> Is there a, I don't know, a, like a coat hmm. with it?" Interesting, novel idea. I think it looks great. That mask is pretty fantastic. He starts and then turns it back around and it now has a mm. appropriately coordinated and <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. got big epaulets and uh, no. <laughs> it's all very clean and flowing lines. Right. Um, it's kind of like, um, what, am, what am I thinking of? Um, I can see the image in my, it, not quite Lawrence of Arabia, but still that kind of that flowing where it all kind of comes together, so. Right. Yeah, that's that's great. Now, y'all are uh, really great at this. I mean, obviously, that's why you, that's why you do it. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate the yeah. we appreciate the compliment. We do we do aim to. Thanks. Uh, question: The cane is that functional? Of course. All right. All uh, all of our designs aim to be both comfortable, functional. And of course, elegant. Nice. Sounds great. I'll take it. All right. Well, let us um, <clears throat> bring this through. And you see, um, up until this point, it's just been the two of you. Yeah. Um, now some other servants. And they come in. One of them comes in bringing a tray with what looks like refreshments and an assortment of teas. And there's actually a little uh -huh. decanter uh, with what looks like a brown liquid. You can assume some kind of like whiskey or something like that. And a little you know, crystal glasses to go with it and sets it down. And the other um, servant comes in and has a couple of words um, and... Uh, with, uh, with the brother and the sister, and she heads out, and they start bringing in um, what is obviously the pieces of the costume that have already been kind of put together. Right. Um, and 
<clears throat> you spend the next little bit of time uh, if you want to choose to partake of the refreshments, not partake of the refreshments, whichever happens. I think but, he would he would he would he would see the the stiffer drink and and take a some time to consider that before switching over to tea. Okay, alrighty. Um, and they get you, they t put this on there and they get you fitted. And um, yes. thanks to the uh, wonders of magic, they don't <laughs> actually have to wait too long to send You hear some muttered incantations and you see lines start to hems drop and then get reaffixed. And this gets, oh, that was going to have to come out of my chest <laughs> a little bit more than we thought it would. <laughs> so some adjustments are made. And by the time it's done, you have your outfit assembles and they, you change back into your clothes and they box it all up for you. And uh, you have these big boxes with your outfit for the evening, as well as this mask for the, uh, the masquerade ball at the end of it. Thanks a lot for, uh, for all this and, and uh, thanks for this. It was a pleasure, Mr. Kell. We hope that you will uh, return to us whenever you find yourself in need of another outfit. If nothing else, I'll recommend you to people that might know. What, uh, what do I owe you for this? Oh, everything has been taken care of, Mr. Cal. Oh, okay. That's great. Great, because a guy just charged me 150 <laughs> for, some, for some earth water earlier, so, <laughs> so that's good. I'll take it. Thanks. <laughs> She's like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's the first yeah. time. Everything else, it, I mean, has just maintained this pleasant <laughs> and you know, like nothing you said phased her. Sure. And at that, it was the first time that it was kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and you head back out, and then by about that time, you see that. Uh, um, Carrie is out there as well, and she has her own collection of assorted boxes and goods and, and whatnot. All right. All right, let's get you back to, let's get you back to your rooms, and you can get freshened up and dowdied up for tonight, and uh, I'll pick you up at, uh, I'll pick you up at the stroke of seven. Sounds good. All right. Oh, hey, can we talk about these games while we're walking back? Of course. C Carrie. Um, and you guys are actually welcome back to the Lucky Leap, and they're going to have the, you don't have to haul the boxes. They're going to get them oh, delivered. Oh, good. I was yeah. like. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to figure out what, what to compete in. I, I really want to do this. The uh, problem is all the games are no, just odd. And um, there's nothing really straightforward. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got this one that's uh, the mermaid lumberjacks. I guess we're building something underwater. All right. You know, um, you, I mean Willow Creek. It was you know you toss poles and sure. axe throwing and wrestling and bare knuckle. You know it, that doesn't exist here. It's just. I don't know. It's uh, I, I don't know. Everything in Ona Bear is a uh, is a little much sometimes. Well, especially yeah. the King's Games. Yeah. I mean, this is the event of Maybe the year. Maybe I should go out for the Prince's Games. So like a like the Prince <laughs> Games, or like the Advisors Games. Well, which one? Uh, I'm assuming you're looking for something more physical prowess. I, I, I don't even, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not, uh, listen, I think, I think I'm just going to do them all. Really? Yeah. I think you should. I think that'll be, I'd love to see that. I think, I think they don't make any sense to me. So I'm just going to do them all. Because I think the worst thing I could do is pick one thing and then it not be. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're gonna embrace something, you should just embrace it. Kel, I love that for you. Yeah. Absolutely, get in there, try them all. And if you need a partner. Why don't there's a partner thing in here? Well, I, I don't mean so much a partner, but I mean someone to, you know, enjoy <clears throat> the day with. I think you and, and me and Beck. Yeah, 
and we could just have a we could just have a day of it and be almost like old times. I mean, and maybe we could eat. Maybe we could what? No. Um. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, be like old times. Be great. Be great. We'll do it all. Absolutely. We'll It'll be it amazing. All. Oh, and, and that, um, did she meet Arlen? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought she did. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is about to get weird. <laughs> um, and your little cute as a button uh, friend that you brought with you from, uh, from back at your farm. Well, this will be just the chance he needs to too. So, are you going to encourage him to enter some of these games? Uh, Get his foray in? You know, today's the first day I've really even seen the list. Um, but I'll talk to him. You know, Arlen's, uh, Arlen's a pretty talented fella. He could do a lot. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll mention it to him. All right. I think this is going to be so fun. We are going to have... It'll be a day. <laughs> be a day absolutely absolutely all right well here you are i'm gonna mosey my way on back and get myself uh get myself ready for the evening um it's gonna be an adventure for us tonight yeah i'm looking forward to it all right, all right. and she leans up and gives you a quick kiss on the cheek and Thanks, kind of pats you on the on the chest and grabs a kind of waves her hand and we'll you know, one of the carriage. Yeah, a little carriage pa passes by and pulls up, and she hops in. Right, <clears throat> right. Head inside. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. I probably want to eat before we go to this thing tonight. Eat something. Is, right. there, is there like a go go up to the bar? Reese, uh, whoever's working. Mm-hmm. It's the same serving girl whose name I don't remember off the top of my head now, but there's Hello. two there's two like main ones who are there. So can I, I get something to take to my room? Some something to eat. Some stew, something. Sure. Just whatever. Yeah. I'll get I'll get you Thanks. something to bring it up there. No problem Thanks. whatsoever. I'll get you a, you want some water or an ale? Uh, is, uh, no, water'd be fine. Right. Just some water's fine. All right. Well why don't you go ahead and head up to your room? I understand that there were some packages that were just dropped off. Yeah. Um sent them up that way, so See him up there. I'll send it up there to okay, you. Okay, thanks. What time of day is it? Uh, it's late afternoon at this point. All right. Um, when I head up there, go to Arlen's room. Mm hmm And... All right. All right. I, and... Okay, just a minute. Oh. <laughs> You're... You're... Hi there, Kale. Hey, how was your day? It was amazing. How was yours? Uh, it was fine. Um, the uh, the games. The King's Games, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do all of it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can't pick. I'm going to do it all because I can't pick. Maybe. I'm going to do them too. You're going to do them all too? Sure. You and me, Kill. It's not a team. It's not a team thing. Well, I know, but we can uh, we can go in there in some friendly competition between us or whatever it may be. I think that's just going to be swell. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Be great. Great. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure, let you know, and see if you were interested. Yeah, I'm so. definitely interested. This place is... I've never seen anything like it in this. So many different people. And, and by people, I mean... Well, you know, growing up in Nangrath, you know, we got... We got humans, we got dwarves. And you see the other, other things every now and then and stuff. But, I mean, there's like... There's like all kinds here. Yeah. And and it's amazing and all the all the different shops and and there's so much that I've walked the city one end to the other. I mean they have like I just can't even tell you what all they have. But they did I did find one of them I found a couple of them, but I found this one specific magic shop. And it looks real spooky. But I went in anyway because I thought to myself, what would Kel do? And I said to myself, well, Kel wouldn't be afraid. He'd go into that place. And so I went in and i tell you what, I've never, it was amazing. And, and the guy who ran the shop, Kel, 
Well, he was a little spooky. But he was really interesting, too. And I've just, you know, I've never really sat and just talked about magic to someone like that for for that long. And he, and he was really interested in me. And he was real interested in what I could do. And, uh, and it, you know, he was just, it was good to talk to somebody. So, yeah. Anyway, King's Games. Absolutely. What are you doing tonight? I have a, a thing I have to go to. Oh, you got a date. It's not a date. I'm helping a friend. Uh, who are you helping? Carrie. Oh, so you got a date No, it's Carrie. not a date. She's supposed to go with this other person, and the other person is sick, and so she still has to attend the thing, and she's supposed to attend it with someone, so I am going in his place. Well, I think the important thing is here, you get to step out with Miss Carrie Tabor. That is a, that is a beautiful woman. Yeah, Carrie's great. Carrie's great. Yeah, she she seems real nice. She seems real nice, Kel. Yeah, she's I think, um, uh, she's real nice. I think you should enjoy your enjoy your evening. Thanks, Arlen. Listen, you have a good night, and uh, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. All right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm doing some reading. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back to that. Great. He steps back into the room and closes the door. And... Great. Head to the room. Okay. And uh, I, he was like, oh, I guess I should catch a nap before this thing. But <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to fail a con check and wake up too late. <laughs> Failure your what con check if you, <laughs> you can you can make I'm sure like, that I'm like re- genuinely worried about no. no 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 don't sleep don't sleep we can't set an alarm um great I think he's you don't just, have that spell I don't have that spell that's right <laughs> that's what we you need. would put a wake up call I don't know does that even exist in five e like a set something so that you will wake up at a certain time. We were like you remember Wyvern Watch it Is seems like it could be a spell? cantrip. Like, as long as it's not longer than an hour, like, you don't want to wake up longer than an hour. I don't know. That's right. Um, All right. No, I think Kel is, uh, yeah. Um, The thing is tonight, when they bring the food up. Mm -hmm. Which happens. uh, Here's your plate. Oh. oh, hmm. Hey, question. How do I get a bath? No, I can arrange to, actually, if you just come over here, um, Mr., uh, Riccio has uh, given you use of his private apartment, so he has a, he actually has a, a bath in there that you can just... Can, can I ask another odd question? Um, it's not odd to want to be clean? No, it's not that. Um, well, no, it, it's kind of like that. I, I need to, um, I need to fix, I need to fix this a little bit. You mean your hair, I assume? Yeah. I can do that for you. You can trim it? I can do a simple trim. I mean, if you Great. want something more. No, I, I just I just don't want to look like I just, you know, came out of the woods. Ah, you have a date. It's not a date. But I want to make sure I don't look like I just crawled out from under a rock. All right. We'll get you taken care of. Thanks. I'll tell you what. Um, why don't I go ahead and get a... And get something... Um, actually... <laughs> You're going to be surprised about this again. Um, riccio has got uh, scissors and combs and things, so we can just borrow that. I'm sure he doesn't mind. Um, come on. Yeah. And she leads you out into the his apartments and um, starts drawing the bath, and she sets you down and puts you around and trims you, and very quickly and very efficiently and very nicely gives you a nice trim with your hair Thank and, you. and everything. Yeah, that's much better. Hi. Much better. You practically look presentable. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, well. Tipper? <laughs> no, come on. This is just... Thanks. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for thinking of that. Yeah. All righty. Well, you enjoy your date. I'm going to get out of your hair so you can take your bath. Thanks. And um, the boxes, I don't remember if I mentioned that. They've been put in your room. Yeah. No, I saw them in there. All righty. Yeah. All right. Thanks a bunch. All right. Appreciate it. And she heads out. Great. And... Bathe... Comb my hair, put some oil in my hair. My hair. My hair. <laughs> and uh, a little oil in the beard, and uh, and uh, go and get dressed. All righty. Go get dressed. All righty. 
Um, I'm not wearing the lion mask out of the place, though. I'm going to keep that kind of like tucked in my jacket. Right. And that's obviously the intent that the mask is, and was mentioned, the mask is for the ball. I go wake up um, in the middle of the night with that thing. Yes. It is. Uh, you do. Uh, there was a full length marrow. Mur. Mur. In Recio's. Mur. And you, take, you do take a moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna take over your character for you. Do take a moment to go back in there with the full ensemble and including a you kind of can't resist. You put the mask on, um, and it is a striking ensemble exuding power and elegance. Um, and it it is a uh, yeah, it is everything. You have a regal flair, and you do take a moment to look at the sword. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, the cane sword. Um, which meets seamlessly. So, um, and there's a locking mechanism and it's, it, it's hidden. They demonstrated it for you before right. you left. So without knowing it, where that mechanism is, be, it would require a really high perception check <laughs> for somebody to discover it. So otherwise it is, it looks just like a, like a cane. Great. Um, and Practice walking with that because he's like I, you know he's he's had to use maybe like a crutch or something for him and like hurt his leg doing right. something or, or what but like just how people walk with a cane he's almost imitating people that he's seen um, his father I'm sure at some point used a cane but it was for very practical purposes and he leaned on it so trying to you know practice just having an upstanding walk. I think the majority of whatever time he has left, he spends walking about his room with his cane trying to trying to hold himself up and Is look. he gonna is he gonna rehearse some dance steps too, just to make sure he still remembers how to <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, so some of the yeah. The it, magical uh Mary Trot or <laughs> The Madrigal Mary Trot. We all know that dance from back in the day and the Willow Creek. The festival foot stomp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Promenade. I, I love it. I love it. All right, oh. and you and you do you cut you actually cut quite the figure, and I will I will say because they are masters at um, at. Elegantly quaffing in a moves a okay and doesn't. It is. It is very. That's obviously part of what they. You know, the first step to being elegant is being comfortable in your own. You know, um, but the clothing is actually the, everything from the material to the way it fits. It not only feels good that it feels good against your skin. It moves very well, and it also drapes and tucks and everything and all that. You're right. like. Huh. Who needs to take performance enhancing, you know, grass water? That's right. um, <laughs> not this guy. I cut a figure and cut a rug. I don't need so, to do any of this stuff I've been yeah. doing. I'm just get hand tailored things. That'll look great. So with that, yes. you are ready, ready for your date. It's not a date. And that is where we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and stop for this session. You got it. Oh, we're so close. <laughs> <laughs>